Hello and welcome to Hollywood Approved with Kristen and Yell. Each episode is an exploration of taste as we dive into the good, the bad, and the unexpected in movies and TV. Tune in for the celebrity guests. Stay for the surprising recommendations. Plus, we are getting creative with modernizations and fan casting some of our favorites. This is Hollywood Approved. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How are you? I mean, I know we had an episode last week, but it was like pre-taped. So I feel like I haven't seen you in a million years. It has been a little bit. Um, I'm so excited to be back. I'm actually very excited about today's episode because uh, not only do we have an amazing guest who I am dying to talk to, but we also are fan casting uh, something that I know we both love because it is Halloween season. Yes. Spooky, spooky. Yeah, so we're going to get into Casper in a bit. Um, But first, uh, the new season of We're Here is out now, right? And uh, we will soon be speaking with our guest from that. I'm so excited. Uh, Joining us today is the one and only Eureka O'Hara. Hello! (laughs) Woo! So excited to be here. How are you all? Oh, we're I'm, so excited we're so you're excited. here. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I want to talk about the second season uh, because you start off really being like COVID happened, uh, yeah. which a lot of shows I feel like we're like, we're going to try to avoid that. Uh, but you all don't. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, working within the constrictions of COVID? Yeah, I love that we're talking about it. You know, the thing is, it's like, girl, I, it's, okay. It's kind of like in life where, you know, queer people so often, we get this like, oh, we'll just pretend like it's not real. Like a don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. Same thing with COVID. Girl, it happened. We all went through it, right? It was a hard year for everybody. So why pretend like it didn't happen? You know, we're all still like traumatized by it. Let's be honest. And I think that that's what people are going to relate with in this season of we're here in, in connecting with the daughters and the experiences because everyone went through this year together and we're filming it immediately after. And everyone wants to feel like they belong somewhere and that they have community and they can come back together. So it's going to be emotional for people to watch because of that. Um, But it's also going to be fun and exciting. And the reason that we touched base on it is because it's important for our history, you know, and it helps explain the end of last season because we obviously cut off Spartanburg, came back. So it kind of gives you that full circle moment. There was so much growth within Noah's story from Spartanburg. You know, there was some resistance in Olin's story because he was hoping that it wouldn't come back. So he wouldn't have to do it. (laughs) You know what I mean? out of fear of his community and being a straight man, you know, so there's elements that made the story that much more powerful. Um, Working through COVID was tricky, you know, but we had to get tested every day. Our noses were sore from being swabbed a million times a week. Um, Vaccines were, you know, gotten as soon as we could. Um, And a lot of precautions as far as masks, we had to ask permission to take our masks off once we were sitting in people's homes. Everyone had to be tested and mandated that was on camera. Some episodes we have very small crowds because we were only allowed to have like, let's say, 25 people in the audience. And then as restrictions lifted in certain areas, we could have bigger audiences. So it's going to be, it's just an authentic experience season two is. And that's what we wanted to give to the audience. Absolutely. And now I'm curious for you, how did, you know, outside of COVID, how has season two been different from that first season? Well, season two has been different just because We learned so much from the first season of just how to navigate the storytelling, um, how to um, really upgrade the showcase itself, um, how to transform the spaces, you know, the spaces that we wanted to create for queer people in these areas. Um, It was just a learning process, first season was. We also got a lot of feedback from our fans and from other people. Um, to see what they wanted to see more of. So I think y'all are going to be very pleasantly surprised. Um, I want to know, uh, as a as a bigger girl, I love seeing mm-hmm. my big drag queens. So um, I want to know, 
how is it uh, to be in that community and and be a plus size drag queen? I, I know in the first episode you had Faith, who's a plus model. Um, it just feels like something that isn't really talked about. Yeah, it isn't talked about because I think in society we still do suffer from a lot of fat phobia when it comes to the entertainment industry. People want to pretend like fat phobia isn't real, but it's it's very real and maybe even more so real in bigger people um, and in smaller people too. There is a fear of getting bigger. You know, there's a, there's a health scare when it comes to it. And there's a classic assumption that's built around obesity um, in society that, you know, bigger people are undisciplined and organized and healthy. And it's just a stigma that we're trying to fight against. We're people that are trying to find happiness and health too. You know, I have probably better eating habits than most of my skinny friends, to be honest, <laughs> um, because they just have a different body. It's called biology. It's science. It's not something that we can control. It's a lot like the animal kingdom. You know, there are certain animals that are bigger than others. And I think that we as a species reflect those that animal kingdom as well. You know, that's why I love deeming myself as the elephant queen, because I feel like I'm, you know, I'm more of an elephant woman in drag, especially because I love my pachyderms and I have a herd of family and Eureka's all about the heart and the protection of that family and also the protection of my size and that gentle giantness, you know, I'm six foot four and almost 500 pounds. I'm a big person, you know, and for me growing up, plus size women is where I found confidence. You know, people like Queen Latifah and Lisa Lampanelli and uh, Melissa McCarthy and Monique and any plus size diva icon I was obsessed with. You know, and then Chris Farley and John Candy as far as the boy side too. Um, so it's important, I think, just to showcase that big is fierce and happy and confident. And there's a lot of things that you can learn from me as a bigger person, even though I'm big, you know? It's yeah. just one side of me. <laughs> Do you ever feel like there is fat phobia uh, in the drag community? I mean, I think, I think there's fat phobia in any community. Right. I think drag, it's a little different because I think there's some power in being a big drag queen. I think people often will love big drag queens, but it's still when it comes to mainstream media, social media, stuff like that, you'll see there is a difference. You know, you can see it in the numbers. It's the same as being a person of difference in general. It's the same for queens of color. Racism is truly in every community, even the drag community. So you'll see that happening to a lot of black queens as well. You know, so it's not just for bigger people. So the proof is there. Um, now we have seen it and we can cultivate a new way of thinking and a new way of like promoting each other and supporting each other so we can create real change. Yeah, I actually love how in the first episode we see Eureka's family and mm -hmm. I, I was like, I've never seen this many talented, big women dancing. And it's exactly. amazing. Yay! That was my goal. Like, literally, like, I, I come from a long lineage of just really powerful Amazonian women. My mom was six foot tall. My biological mom. My drag mother, Jacqueline St. James, which you got to meet, is a beautiful trans woman of size. Honey, with big boobies and smells like Mackie. <laughs> You know, my drag sister being a trans woman of color who taught me how to dance, taught me how to kick my leg in the air, to be honest, and also choreographed partial of that number along with Marvin, who's another person of color from the UK that's our choreographer. My daughter, Sia, who's a plus size gay man. It was just important to showcase across the spectrum of my drag family where I come from, uh, because this show really teaches people that if you feel like you don't belong, or if you don't have people or, or a space that you belong, create it. We as people have the power to find our tribe and find people that we can love and, and cultivate our own spaces. That is I beautiful. That. I love that. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, Kristen. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear, you know, I mean, obviously that was an important, you know, big moment for you guys. Um, in this in this uh, most recent season but just in general did you have any like favorite moments or any moments that were maybe more challenging yeah i mean season two was very challenging obviously because of covid also because of time this show takes a lot of work we take about 12 days to film any episode versus like an in-studio show there's a lot of on-site filming there's rough terrain we're in full drag. You know, we're also transporting like 
giant drag queens fully dressed in vehicles to different locations to shoot outdoors in 10 inch stiletto pumps. You know what I mean? So um, there's a lot of issues that come with that, but support is how we get through it. Working together, me, Bob and Shangela have become quite the supportive trio of each other. And we also just have iconic team members that work with us, the production team. Um, and it can be scary. My favorite moments would be like, you know, popping up in Del Rio, Texas, in the, our football gear, being able to walk across um, a border of Mexico and America and showing that culture of that cultivated American and Mexican culture when in an environment where that's a huge struggle. We were able to work in Selma, Alabama, where Bloody Sundays happened, where Martin Luther King Jr. spoke, and then the march happened from um, Selma to Montgomery in Alabama, and we got to speak with foot soldiers that were actually there. Um, that's an incredible moment. Um, incredible moments like Pantheola reclaiming that plantation home, um, yeah. Bob the Drag Queen, some of my least favorite moments is her giving me shit on the road every time she gets a chance because she's a big sister, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and picking at me. There's a moment when we were on the road and I was trying to do that, oh yeah, thing. It was like a trend. Do you remember where uh, there was that video where it'd be like, can I get an oh yeah? And everyone goes, oh yeah. <laughs> so one day I was on the bus and I was like, I was trying to do a video for my Instagram and I was like, Okay, everybody, can I get a oh yeah? And girl, everyone was crickets. No one said anything. So then like an hour later, we're getting ready to get off the bus. And Bob stands up and was like, hey, Eureka, everybody, can I get a oh yeah? And everyone went, oh yeah. And I was like, fuck all y'all. Y'all are terrible. I hate you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, so we have a lot of fun picking at each other, you know, and. Um, and also in Colorado, you know, we had a little pushback with people. Um, there's obviously the haters. There's the F word gets thrown out here and there. You know what I mean? That's obviously a, a crappy moment, but just the support makes it worth it. Yeah. Well, let's jump into our TV discussion. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's time to talk about what is the last thing you watched? Uh, Eureka, do you want to share the last thing you watched? Um, well, actually, the last thing I watched was Midnight Mass. Ooh. Um, insane um it was crazy i also just watched this um documentary about a playboy bunny that was murdered by her husband i can't remember the name of it oh that was a little intense um i also i love fantasy stuff so um I, anything with witches anything with magic you know uh, i yes. love yeah anything with magic lock and key i like the new series charmed um, Ooh, we're like all watching the same yeah, thing. I know. With like pretty little liars. Uh, I love this. Oh my God. Fires everywhere, right? What is it? Little yeah, fires everywhere. everywhere. Perfect stranger. Well, you've watched a lot. Lotus. I love TV and film. I, I watch TV and movies any chance I get. It's my favorite thing in the world. You're in the right place. Yes. That was just TV. You want to know what movies I've been watching? <laughs> Wait, we have more questions. We have more questions. Have more questions. Okay, let's, okay. let's dive into one of those. Like, tell us a little bit more about your thoughts on Midnight Mass, because I'm curious. Well, Midnight Mass was insane. I still don't really understand completely what was going on. I don't know if I have fully finished it. I've rewatched. Like, I, I keep going back and watching it again, um, and I'm still not completely understanding what's happening. So I don't really know. It's just intense. Um, I've also been watching American Horror Story double feature because Ooh. that was in the first half. I'm just saying. Ooh. As Chris with the cancer. I don't know if y'all caught that. Episode four of Blood Buffet. <laughs> um, so I've also been watching that. But Midnight Mass, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't really understand what's happening, but I keep watching it. I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Kristen, what, did, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Midnight Mass... I will say for me, I, I love Mike Flanagan because all the things that he does, he always like puts these Easter eggs in of like past yeah. things. Like his Oculus mirror is like in the background in Midnight Mass and you're like, oh my God. Or like the fact that Midnight Mass itself was based off, like it was in his movie Hush um, where yeah. like a girl wrote uh, Midnight Mass. And so like he has all these like, it interweaves like so much. Oh. Like, like, oh my God, this is too much. But um. I personally didn't love Midnight Mass. I just thought it was a little slow. Um, right. But Mike Flanagan's just a genius. You know, like, 
just it is a little slow. I think that's why I have to keep rewatching it because I'm like yeah. trying to figure out what is going on. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I like the story with the main character. Obviously, it's a tragic story where he was a drunk driver and he killed mm -hmm. he kills the girl, so he just get, got back from prison. But then randomly halfway through the series, he kills himself by letting the sun burn him alive. So then he's like a vampire martyr. Mm -hmm. It's so confusing. I'm just like, yeah, well, that I did not expect. Right. <laughs> like, I thought you were the lead of the show. I thought the whole show was built around him. Yep. And, and then you're like, like now what? Like He's gone. <laughs> well, once he left, it kind of lost me because I was like, okay, well, then what storyline am I following? I guess the priest, but yeah. I guess so, but I guess I was waiting for his full story. For some reason, I think going into it, I thought he was going to become the priest in the end. Like, I was oh, waiting. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. You know what saying? Because he was so anti-religion, and then he slowly starts coming back around because he's having those AA meetings with the priest. So I figured that eventually the, the community would find out that the priest is actually a vampire, and then he would actually be the true descendant oh. of priest for the community. In the end, uh, and instead he just was like, "Bye, everyone. I don't yeah, want to." Do this. Like, oh, no. I was just like, "What? Okay, this makes no sense. I don't know what's happening now." Yeah, yeah. Well, did, now, you, did you watch no, it? No, it looked scary. But I now, but now I want to see. I want to see Eureka's version of this. No, well, we're, I know my version. You want to see, but the real version just—it's not worth it. Watch American Horror Story instead. So, and you'll get Eureka too. I know. Yeah, I really I wanted to see too. it because I wanted to see you, but. It's exactly. scary. It's too and, scary. No, it's not. American Horror Story is not that scary this season, actually. It's a little more intelligent and, like, intricate in the story plot. So, like, the first half is about these pills that people take to become famous. But if you are talented, then you have to drink blood to cultivate your talent. And you're the best at what you do if you take these pills. But if you're not talented, you become these, like, pale face like, creatures mm -hmm. that are, like, kind of incoherent. What and, commentary. Yeah. And so that's the first half. And then because it's double feature. Right. The new half is about aliens. And they've incorporated Amelia Earhart. So you know how Amelia Earhart, the plane was never discovered mm -hmm. um, after she flew out. So in this series, it basically says she was abducted by aliens. And she's in the beginning of the series and comes back and is pregnant with an alien baby. Ah! Like, it's good. It's good. You got to check it out. Oh, my gosh. You sold us. Oh, my God. All right. Kristen, what is the last thing you watched? Oh, okay. The last thing I watched was The Babysitter's Club Season 2. Work. Yes. Right. Did you go up with The Babysitter's Club 2? I have not gotten to watch it yet, but now I will. I didn't even know it was out. Did yes. you read the books? Of course, girl. I'm a homosexual that grew up with three sisters. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Fully read the books. Yes. Nice. I love the show so much. I feel like what I hear is like 30 something year olds just love the babysitters club. And I'm like, yes, no. you're right. I do love it. It's just so heartfelt and heartwarming. And they really have been pushing the boundaries, I think, in terms of um, the stories they're telling in terms of making them more inclusive, making them yeah. more diverse. Um, so Did yeah. you watch the old movie? There's like an old movie called the babysitters club. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And the, the old classic nineties oh. movie. Yes. Yeah. And the old show that I feel like nobody but me watched. Nope. It was so good though. The, the oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. I need to go back and watch that. I don't know if I watched the show or not. I didn't even know the show existed. There is an old show. Yeah. Peak, I, peak Babysitter's Club. I will say I like Babysitter's <laughs> Club season two. Uh, as I tweeted, I, they changed Dawn and I understand it and I think it's fine. And the new Dawn is, she's great. I don't like change. They're like, really? It's confusing. I know. I hate change too. <laughs> but you know what? We gotta we gotta embrace this change because the other Dawn is now like a Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, I super, know. So like, good for her. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy true. for That's her. True. We understand why she had to leave. <laughs> She's literally. She no girl. She was like, nope, I got superpowers. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I will say the second season of Babysitter's Club is very, very queer and I love it. Well, then I have to watch it. I can't believe I haven't. I saw the first season, but I I didn't even realize the second one was out. It just came, it came out. out this week, so you didn't oh, miss okay, okay. too much yet. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what platform is that? That Netflix. is on Netflix. I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, so the no, last thing. What? Sorry. Yeah. The last thing I watched uh, was Why the Last Man. Oh, uh, how is on it? FX? Wait, what's that? So the story is uh, something 
happens and all the uh all the men essentially um d die and so it, the like just in an instant they all die um and i will say the i hear the graphic novel is great um and the like concepts that they're talking about or trying to address in the show is very interesting especially mm -hmm. because now now that we have a better understanding of gender and we have language to describe it it's even more interesting in that in this show um you will see a lot of trans men which is fascinating um but the premise is that only what there's one cis man who is alive and and the question is so there's actually a lot of trans men though in it there are quite a few, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's really wonderful that they're exploring that. I will say the show is not great. Well, I just, I it sounds like an odd premise. And I wonder, just because, you know, just because Hollywood is so, let's be honest, chauvinistic when it comes to storytelling. And I think that we as an audience are also trained to be that way too. So I can see how it'd be interesting how the storyline would be played because they're used to doing like, obviously the women are the vulnerable characters, not the men. Sure. So how I, that actually makes me excited to watch it. That so, the, the masculine energy is the vulnerable energy. I'll say this. It is um, like an all women uh, production, almost all women. Like the producers are all women. The showrunners are women. Um, and there's a really amazing scene. Um, I want to say it's in the fourth episode where um, you're seeing like just a, a bunch of women in this group and they're all bathing and it is done from the female gaze. They don't sexualize them and it's all different body types, which like Whoa. I was so excited to see diverse bodies, like nude, diverse bodies, just bathing. And it's not sexy. It's just they're bathing because they need yeah. to bathe. Um, right. <laughs> She's like, because I need a bath. But <laughs> it's so it was so great. Um, and so there's a lot of interesting discussions about how with no men, there are still women who are upholding the patriarchy and and Love what that. that looks like. And so I want it to be great, but it's it's fine. It's it's getting better, yeah. but it's fine. Figure, you know, it would probably be better if the women would like trap the man and be like, you know taking his semen and freezing it and like going all crazy that we want, we want there to be like true conflict, like true intense conflict. Yeah. And it's and a it lot of like, like yeah, you're right. That is a very apt description. Yeah. It's probably, I mean, I think probably because women don't want to portray females as intense as like you would a man in a series like that. I can see where there would be like, that's what seems tricky to me, but mm -hmm. I think they should have went full force with it. And made like a woman doctor be like, well, we're going to make sure that we fix this and like totally trap the man and like, you know, like be that character. Why not? Well, I, I think I'm interested to see where it goes. And I wonder how different it is from the graphic novel. Put me in a producer room, girl. I will help these people out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yes. I love it. Uh, gets fired immediately for being cocky. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could improve a lot of things. Um, all right. Our next question is, what is a show or movie you just discovered? Can be new or old. Well, you know, honestly, um, just discovered. Hmm, that's a good one. Oh, there was one that I just recently watched that I was obsessed with. Let me look, actually. Um, first of all, my one that I really just recently discovered is um, it's actually an older movie called Beautiful mm. with uh, Winona Ryder. It's about her like wanting to be Miss America Miss. Okay. And she's like, she's she has like a low income family and they don't believe in her doing it. But she's like, you know, doing all these like random things around town to make money to compete on her own. And she keeps doing it. And then she has a daughter and she can't tell him that she's pregnant. So her roommate like pretends that it's her daughter so she can still compete. But in the end, she like tells everyone at the national pageant that this is my daughter and I should be able to compete yeah. anyway. And she ends up winning anyway. It's it's so good. It's just good. Oh, that sounds really that. good. Where'd you watch it on? Um, Amazon. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Um, and then TV show, probably that, what's it called? Uh, red cherry flavor. Oh, that was crazy. Brand new cherry flavor. <laughs> crazy. I had no idea. I've not finished it yet. 
but I just was told about it. So I just started it, but it seems crazy. I'm so excited for you. Uh, yeah. Kristen, what is the, what is something you just discovered? Um, something that I just discovered uh, a little bit older is basically the entire, entire Chucky franchise. I've been watching all of them since this Friday. Um, so I could watch the TV show that just came out and I'm invested. Like I am in the cult of Chucky right now. Like I didn't realize that I was going <laughs> to be so into it, but like, it's so fascinating and like they've really built this whole history over like the last 30 something years around Chucky. I didn't even realize yeah. there's so many movies. Um Wait, but, you just discovered Chucky movies? No. Well, I I oh, rewatched them all for the TV show that just came out. So um, have you is the TV show out? The first episode came out yesterday. Oh my gosh, I have to watch it. Where's it? Is it on FX? Um, sci it is sci-fi USA. Sci yeah, it's really good. Is I think on a streaming channel. Uh, I don't think it's Hulu. Maybe it I might don't... end up on Peacock because it's NBC oh, Universal. It's NBC. Yeah. Oh my god, I just cannot keep up. I know there's so many platforms, right? It's insane. But um, I really had a lot of fun watching the movies. Um, and then yeah. I think the TV show is like better than all of them, which really? like was great because it like really is following the story that especially the last two movies left off on. So really? it's just like a very seamless transition and you get to dive so much deeper in They're They're going to be diving into a new story, but there's also like a million Chuckies. And then there's going to be, they're going to dive into the history of um, Charles Lee Ray, you know, when he was a kid and how he became a murderer and all Whoa. this. Stuff. It's like really, really good. So far. Whoa. yeah, so, that sounds like it's going to be good. Yeah, I did hear they're using a lot of the same cast from the movies and stuff too. Yes, they're all the kid that played Andy is coming back. Um, you know, he's like I think forty something now. You know, <laughs> playing the right. role since he was six. Uh, they have Kyle, who was in the second movie, coming back. Um, Jennifer, Jennifer Tilly. Tilly. I mean, just being yay, Jennifer uh, Tilly. Yeah, and you know, I didn't even realize that um, Jennifer Tilly is is half Chinese, and I was just like, "Wow, we've had this like horror icon, like a Chinese horror icon for like An years." Asian, and, yeah, and I, had, I had no idea. Um, well, well, props to Jennifer Tilly, everyone. Props yes. to Jennifer Tilly. Mm -hmm. What about you, Yale? What are you watching? So or, well, I just I just discovered mm -hmm. an Australian series. It's four episodes. It's on Hulu. It is called The Unusual Suspects. Ooh. It is like, it feels very similar to um, Big Little Lies, but it's a comedy and it's okay. four episodes. And the premise is that there is this theft um, and and it's really like you start with there's a theft and then you go back in time and see how we got to who actually stole it. Um, and it's about these rich Australian white women and their um, Filipino uh nannies and housekeepers and what? like it's so fascinating it's literally four episodes it's very funny um and it stars um one of the aunts from chilling adventures of sabrina who which one um zelda yes okay. turns oh, out yes. she's australian oh yes she Whoa. is she was in um dance academy another amazing australian show <laughs> yeah so it's called the unusual suspects and it's on hulu and i don't know how i discovered it but i'm so glad i did i love the show dance academy by the way yes <laughs> really obsessed yes how you, wait how old are you Kristen? 31 me too yes same t that's, that's why Baby's so Club, dance academy one of my favorite movies of like at, well it might be my number it's in my top two movies is center stage Ooh, classic one. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yes. Oh, I was gonna say. So, if you like those, are you a Degrassi stan? Oh, I have not sucked into Degrassi because people told me if I do, I'll never come out. You won't. <laughs> I know, but I I fully should because I'm I'm a mad person when it comes to series. That's why I try to, like, as you can tell, I watch a lot of TV. But once I suck into something, I will not let it go. I will be like infuriated when it's gone completely upset when it ends like i need more and i'll like fully like stalk the people that have like the worst i'm the worst yes. I, love that. I love it i love it 
All right, all right. Uh, next question is, who is one of your TV or movie crushes? Oh, I, oh, oh man, I answered this wrong, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you answered it wrong, Yale. I, can I see went with one of my favorites for, or like what I, one of my first. I went, I, I veered young. I'm so sorry, I wasn't thinking. Ah, I'm changing my, I'm changing first? my. One of it, my firsts, I'm changing. So are you mind. asking what one of your first was? No, 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 just one of your TV movie crushes. Oh, TV movie crashes. Evan Peters for me is one. It's a good one. Yeah. And Johnny Depp. I've always like had a secret love affair for Johnny Depp. Because <laughs> he's like quirky and different. Um, hmm. Yeah, those are my two, probably. And Chris Farley. I've always been in love with him. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, People with a lot of range. Yeah. yeah. They got a lot of range. Yeah, yeah. What about you all? Mine, I mean, I don't really have a celebrity crush, but if I did, I don't see that at all. <laughs> but if I do have a celebrity crush, I feel like it would be Hasan Minaj. I feel like he's so funny and he's very yes. Nice. And I don't know his comedy special that he did a couple of years ago on Netflix. Like, I feel like it's funny, but also tells a story that like kind of makes you want to cry a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I love the range there. I think he's funny. And he can talk serious topics, and he's very handsome. You well, know, I also fully have a crush on Nick Dodani a little bit from Atypical. Mm. Yeah, I think he's so cute, and like, and of, and his character too. Random, sorry. And Rashad, I, I don't know. I, I when you said yours, it just made me think of like the the brown man that I'm obsessed with too. Uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. What about you, Neil? Well, Chris, I was gonna say yours is so good. I never like. I always thought he was like funny and and great, but then he's in the first couple episodes of the morning show uh, oh, of season two, and and he's clean shaven, and I'm like, oh, I see it now. And he does a little dance number, right? Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love the dance? Oh, everyone loves the man that dances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, uh, who's the teacher from Glee? What's his name? Oh, <laughs> Will Schuster. Um, Matthew, Matthew Morrison. Morrison. Matthew Morrison. I Obviously, I'm obsessed. I don't know his name, but I'm obsessed. <laughs> yes. I do know his name, but what about you, Yale? Um, I uh, this is so this is so hard. Um, TV movie questions. I'm gonna go with Florence uh, Pugh. Is that uh, yeah. from okay. from uh, Black Widow? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Her talking wow. about the vest and it having pockets. I'm like, first of all, you're already adorable, but now you understand how much I love pockets. I mean, <laughs> you're like, now you got pockets too. That means you're in love with a stylist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but also Florence Pugh is just so adorable. Yeah. Um, well, I have right. a lot of female crushes, probably more than I do boy crushes. <laughs> like, just because they're just crushes, because I wouldn't act on it, obviously, because I love the penis. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Drew Barrymore for me, like Sandra Bullock. Julia Roberts. I mean, so many women I'm obsessed with. Kate Winslet. Like, um, I mean, I can just go on and on and on. Yes, all the legends. Empowering yeah. females. Meryl Streep, yeah. obviously. Viola mm -hmm. Davis. Oh, uh, yes. Well, uh, we still have one more question, which is, uh, what is the first TV or movie where you remember feeling represented? Um, I mean, it would have to be Tommy Boy, Chris Farley for me. Chris Farley. Oh, really? Boy. Yeah. I mean, Chris Farley was like, because I was like the goofy big kid, you know, trying to like make it. And he just, that's who his character was and everything. And I always wanted to be in movies growing up. So like seeing him made me feel like I could be one day. I love that. I love that. Absolutely. Kristen. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, for me, I said ugly Betty um, I just, oh. I love America Ferreira. Um, I think that she in general is just like a really great, like, um, advocate for like, you know, Latino representation and, um, she's mm -hmm. just done such incredible things in her career and, um, you know, ugly Betty, what I love about that show is that it wasn't about, all of a sudden she becomes a model. It was more like she kind of blossomed into who she was and, you know, she stayed, the, you know, she stayed true to herself, um, but mm -hmm. just kind of like grew over the course of the seasons. And then, you know, all this goofy stuff's happening around her because it's like a telenovela style. But like, you know, I think that they, um, 
And they just had like a really beautiful family. And it was even outside of the family itself, the show, they all had like a beautiful, you know, like family dynamic going on. Even if, you know, Wilmina Slater is like threatening to kill you, she really like is still on your side, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's just a show that like warms my heart when I think about it. And I feel like America Ferrer is just like such an icon, so. Oh, I love that. What about yeah. you, Paul? Yeah, what about you, yeah. So uh, the the first time I felt represented in terms of seeing someone with, I guess, my body on TV or movies had to actually be Fat Amy from Pitch Perfect. Okay. All of my friends would hit me up and were like, have you seen Pitch Perfect yet? Because, because it's you, because it's you. <laughs> um, because she was fat and like, didn't care, like was like, hey, I'm yeah. fat. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I loved that. But also uh, my other answer is in terms of sexuality was seeing uh, Captain Jack Harkness on Doctor Who. Um, because Aww. Captain Jack Harkness uh, was from the future and did not care about gender or species. Um, and I thought that that was just so beautiful. And I was like, wait a second, in the future, everybody fucks everybody, how great. Everyone fucks everyone and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are my answers. I love that. Amazing. Yeah. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you, Eureka, for joining us. Where can people find you? Where can people find what you're working on? Yeah, thanks, Kristen. Thank you, Yale. Honestly, this has been a lot of fun. I love, I love getting to do projects like this where we get to talk about, you know, different film and movies and because I'm obsessed too. So thank you for showcasing we're here. Uh, make sure you check me out on HBO every Monday at 9 p.m. There we'll be releasing new episodes for season two and that's Eastern time. Um, check me out on all social medias at Eureka O'Hara. Eureka like the vacuum cleaner, O'Hara like Scarlet. And uh, remember to always be yourself as authentically as you possibly can. And then people will find you and love you for exactly who you are. Beautiful oh, message. Yes. Yeah. This Love is you. so fun. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all are amazing. <laughs> Bye. Well, that was amazing. I like feel so like joyful now. Yeah. Thank you, Eureka. Wow. Yeah, I love them. Uh, well, we still have fan casting to do. And today, yes. like we said, we are fan casting Casper. Um, we are fan casting only three of the characters, uh, Kat, Dr. Harvey, and Casper. Um, I feel like we don't need to cast the 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 uncles because it's just voices. Yeah, yeah, I think it's fine. All right. <laughs> Let's start with Kat, our, our originally played by Christina Ricci. Who would you put for Kat? So you guys know I love me some Jenna Ortega. So I feel like she would be a good fit. I, I mean, even look even right there, like she kind of has a like somber look where she like, you know, may meet a ghost at any moment. <laughs> um, but I think that she is such a rising star and I think that she's been dabbling already in some like horror-esque projects like the new Wednesday show that's coming out like Scream 5 um, and really like I just want to see her lead everything what about you? I mean I, I think that's a really good choice uh, I actually went with Lydia Jewett um, who was recently in that night books oh uh, yeah thing. It is also in uh, Good Girls. Um, I think she is so talented and she has like a really amazing career ahead of her. And I think that if they were to remake Casper, it'd be nice to see her in the lead. Oh, very nice. I, I feel like you did a little like middle, middle grade and I did like young adult. Yeah, I think mine veered a little younger, um, which is just... interesting. Yeah. Yeah, why yeah. not? All right, who do you have for Dr. Harvey? For Dr. Harvey, I went with Jaime Camille, um, who you may know for from Jane the Virgin, Schmigadoon, mm -hmm. many projects. Um, and I just feel like he's got like a nice, like even with that picture, he has like the nice glasses, the little salt and pepper, like he looks like he'd be like a professor and, you know, he's got those doctor vibes. And I think that it would be like a fun little duo, mm -hmm. you know, father, daughter. I see it. What about you? <laughs> I like it. Um, I actually did a gender swap um, and switched out Dr. Harvey for a woman and went with Simone uh, Rikasner, um, who is currently the lead on The Big Leap on Fox. Um, and I think that she would just do really well 
uh, in a different role because this is, I think, the first time I've seen her on stuff, and I'm I'm just picking people that I think deserve to be seen more mm -hmm. um, and in different roles, right? I think her being this this uh, you know psychiatrist to ghosts uh, might be really a fun twist for her. Yeah, totally. Because she's currently in a show that's like very based in reality, so it would be nice to see her. You know, expand well, from there. Supernatural. Yeah. And lastly, Casper. Who do you have for Casper? All right. I, I went back and forth a little bit. And so I was like, maybe I could have one of these people be the human form and one of the people be the voice. But honestly, they could both do either. Um, but so basically, my choices were like between Mason Gooding and Marcus Scribner. And I mean, look, they're both so little cute guys. I um, actually really like your idea of um, Mark Mason being uh, the face mm -hmm. and Marcus being the voice because he's yeah. so he's so good at voice. Yeah. So like Marcus Scribner, obviously from Blackish, but also was the voice, uh, uh, the voice of Bo in Shira, Shira. The Power. And he's got a great, great animation voice. Um, yeah. And that'd be like a fun Casper voice. And then Mason Gooding from Love, Victor. He's going to be in the new Scream as well. Um, and I just think they're both, you know, cute little guys that would be great as Casper. Yeah. Um, I I did Veer a little younger. So I went with um, Sunny Bustamante, who is in um, Julia the Phantoms uh, as oh, her little yeah. brother. <laughs> Um, I really struggled to find a age appropriate boy to pair up with uh, Lydia because I feel like we've we have a lot of shows with young teen girls and if they have a little brother they're always like too young um, and so it was very it's very interesting right now what's going on in TV you know what I mean like you've got twenty something boys and ten and under boys oh yeah like where's the in between yeah. Um... But yeah, that's funny though because he, like, sort of what, right, wasn't he like sort of? He was really into ghosts. ghosts. Yeah, he was really into ghosts. He thought that there were ghosts in Julian the Phantoms, and I mean, he was right. Yeah. And there you got him playing a ghost. Yep, he. I think he'd be such a fun, friendly ghost, you know. Yeah, and you have like a nice middle grade kind of story, yeah. like a Casper meets Wendy, but like, you know, Casper yeah. and cat. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I think, I mean, if I remember correctly, I, I again, haven't seen the movie since last Halloween. Um, and I, they were like freshmen in high school, right? I don't even remember. Maybe, though. Yeah, I think I think they're 14-ish, freshmen in high school. So uh, I think this 10 to 12 age is fine. 10 to 13. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, until next time, Kristen, what are you up to? Where can everyone keep up with you? What am I up to? What am I up to? You can find my videos um, on youtube.com slash kmaldo. I've been just coming out with reviews and interviews. And um, like I said, been doing a big Chucky, just everything Chucky. So I have a lot of videos about that coming up soon. Um, and I also host the podcast Pop Culture Planet, all about representation and inclusion. Um, and we've been doing a big Latinx Heritage Month kind of like coverage and so actually one of my interviews just came out that i'm very excited about with uh gloria calderon kellett who is an icon mm -hmm. and i'm very excited about that also 20th anniversary of degrassi is tomorrow so of course i'm going to be talking about that as well uh what about you yo um i am everywhere on the internet at yell teagle that is y a e l t y g i e l you can find me on sundays talking about law and order special victims unit the greatest show of all time on a podcast called law and order s review uh you can also find me uh currently every sunday new episodes of the official leverage redemption after show a very distinctive podcast come out on the electric now app so if you've watched the second half of season one on imdb tv head over to electric now you can also find all of those on demand um so you can check that out uh i'm here every wednesday uh with Kristen. Um, and I have some interviews coming out with some people from the cast of Chucky uh, and other things over on that hashtag shows YouTube channel. So keep an eye out for that. I think that's it. Um, and uh, there's more content on this channel uh, from the Hollywood Critics Association. I know that they have shows every day. So make sure you've subscribed and liked and, and have all that stuff set so that you don't miss anything else. Absolutely. 
Thank you again to Eureka for joining us. That was just so fun. What a great episode. Fun. All right. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye. Bye.